So far we've learned about radius, circumference, diameter, arcs, and angles as they relate to circles. Now we're going to talk a little bit more just about special types or specific types of angles in circles. We're going to start with inscribed angles. If you remember from the end of our last lesson, an inscribed angle or inscribed polygon has its vertices on the circle. So an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertices or endpoints are on the circle. So here we have an inscribed angle theorem. As you look at the inscribed angle, we have point A, which is on the circle, point B, which is on the circle, and point C, which is on the circle. That is what's called an inscribed angle. Here's an example of an inscribed angle. Angle A, D, C is inscribed in the circle. We know that we have an arc that measures from C to A. It's a major arc, and it measures 208 degrees. The inscribed angle would be one half of that. Therefore, we now have a theorem or a formula to find the measure of an inscribed angle. The measure of an inscribed angle is one half of the arc which connects its endpoints. Here we have three different types of angles. We've talked about central angles, an angle whose vertic vertex is in the center of the circle. An inscribed angle, its vertex is on the circle and its endpoints are also on the circle. And then we have a nothing. The nothing means the vertex of the angle is not on the center of the circle or not from the center of the circle and it's not on the edge of the circle. So it's not inscribed and it's not a central. Let's look at the angle relationships. When it's a central angle, the arc and the central angle have the same measurement. When it's inscribed angle, the arc and the inscribed angle have a relationship of the angle is one half of the arc. So the inscribed angle is one half of the arc. When it's a nothing, we have no idea. Here it's written out with a formula. The measure of ABC is equal to one half the measurement of arc ADC, or two times the measure of the angle is equal to the measurement of the arc. Next we have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. When this is true, we have another relationship that we can look at. This relationship tells us that the opposite angles equal 180. We have angle ABC, which is the measurement right here of 106, so that would go by angle B. And we have ADC, which is 73.43, which would go up there. So D and B are opposite angles, and when we add their measures together, we get 180 degrees. The same could be true about angles A and C. Those two opposite angles would also equal 180 degrees. So we have a formula. The measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180. And also the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle D also equals 180. Another theorem we have is if inscribed angles which intercept are congruent arcs, then the angles are congruent. What that says is if the arc from C to D is the same as or congruent to the arc E to F, then angle A is congruent to angle B. Therefore, we know the angle A is congruent to angle B. Here's another one. If the angles intercept the same arc, then the angles are going to be congruent. Since angle A intercepts or connects the arc G to H, 
and angle B also connects the arc G to H, then angle B and angle A must be congruent to each other. There's four formulas here. Make sure you have those four for formulas written down so you can reference them as you get into your homework. Here's some example problems. They may not fit in your circle notes. You might want to jot them down on a piece of paper. What we have is arc AB is 100. I'll mark that down in the picture by putting a 100 up here. Now let's start looking at our picture. If we notice, if I trace angle D, which would connect like this, angle D connects or makes arc AB. If you remember one of our first theorems here that we've just learned, angle D then should be half of the arc A to B, which was 100, which means angle 3 should be 50. We can also see that the same thing can be true over by angle C or angle ACB. A to C to B also opens up to that same arc, which is 100. That means that this angle 6 is, whoops, excuse me, should be 50 degrees. So we know two of our angles already. Now it's hard to see, but the center of the circle is where the 9, 10, 11, 12 angles meet. The center of the circle is right here. That means since angle A, or some, we could just call it angle 9, it would be much easier. Angle 9 opens up to AB, the central angle and the arc related to it have the same angle measurement, which means we can put the 100 right here because the arc that connects the endpoints of that angle is 100 as well. Hopefully you can remember back from earlier on this year, we have vertical angles, which means those both have to be 100. We also have that 11 and 12 are a linear pair. Linear pair has to add up to 180, so this angle here has to be 80 degrees. Same reason this one here has to be 80 degrees. Now we pretty much have almost everything that we need. If you look at the two triangles on the side, which have the 50 degrees and the 80 degrees, they are triangles, therefore they have to add up to 180 degrees. 50 plus 80 is 130, plus another 50 makes 180. Same thing on the other side, 50 plus 180 is 130, plus 50 more is 180. We have one more piece of information that you need to be able to identify, and that is that the segment from A to the center point and B to the center point would be called radiuses, and radiuses or radii are all congruent. That means those two segments are congruent. We have an isosceles triangle. Since we have an isosceles triangle, we know that angle 1 and angle 8 have to be the same. Angle 9 is 100 degrees. That leaves 80 degrees for angles 1 and 8. Divide it by 2, and they each are 40. The same thing can be true at the bottom of the triangle. You're probably starting to realize that there's a lot of things that we're going to tie together as we're working on circles. We're going to be working with different types or different pieces of information that we've learned throughout our study so far of geometry. Here's one more question. We know what angle 1 is. It's 1 half x plus 8. We know angle 3 is 2x minus 3. We have no idea what angle 2 is. Our goal here in this question is to find the value of x. Hopefully you can see that the piece of the uh, triangle that's created goes right across the middle of the triangle, which means we have a diameter. That means this part of the arc is 180 degrees. We have a semicircle. 
Angle 2 opens up to that semicircle. Angle 2 is an inscribed angle. That means that angle 2, which opens up to the arc, which is 180 degrees, needs to be half of that, or 90 degrees. We now know that angle 2 is 90 degrees. If we add those three angles together, we should get 180 degrees. It's a triangle. So we have 90 plus 8 is 98, minus 3 would give me 95. 2x and a half of x gives me 2 and 1 half x, plus 95. If we move the 95 over, we get 2 and 1 half x equals 85. Hopefully you know how to use your graphing calculator and this will become really easy because it is simple to divide 85 by 2 and 1 half using your calculator. And you will get 34. We now know the value of x. Last example. Here we have that QR is 50 and TS is 100. Those are both arcs. So the arc from Q to R is 50. The arc from T to S is 100. We want to find the measurement of all of the rest of the angles in the circle. The first angle seems pretty easy to me to start with is angle 1. As I look at angle 1, I notice that it opens up to the arc, which is the measurement of 100. That means angle 1 has to be half of that, or 50. I can also see that angle 4 also opens up to that same arc of 100. These sometimes are a little bit difficult, so tracing them helps. So you notice how I opened up, or marked off angle 4. You can now see that that opens up to arc of 100. That means angle 4 is 50 degrees. Next, there must be a reason why they gave me the other arc of 50 degrees. So I should put that somewhere, or use that somewhere in my picture. Well, I'm going to trace that, the legs that make that arc back. So if I go back from the Q, and I go back from the R, I notice that that's angle 3. Well, angle 3 opens up to the arc, which measures 50. So hopefully you remember now that this should be half of that, or 25. We now would know what angle 3 is. Now we can use the theories of our triangles. We have this triangle with angles 1, 2, and 3. That has to be 180. So far, I've used up 75. That means angle 2 has to be 105 degrees. Angle 5 is vertical to that, so it also has to be 105 degrees. And lastly, we can see that angle 6 is the missing angle of the triangle. We have 155 already, so we need 25 more to make our triangle. And there we have it. There's lots of pieces to this. Hopefully you followed all the way through, and please make sure you note any questions and come back to class and ask.